Hello, hello, everybody. It is Ashley here. I am Totify's community manager, and I am so honored that we have another spotlight with an incredible human that I just got to know a little bit in the last few weeks, Ellie Joy Panic. Thank you so much for being here. How are you today? I am good. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for letting me have you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to hear a little bit about you and your content creation journey. Give us a little background about you. Well, I started in content creation about six years ago-ish, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't really know when it was. It was for work. I started streaming for work. Um, I used to be in game dev marketing, so it was a huge part of my job. But every company that I've worked at, I've always kind of gravitated towards the influencer relations and content creation side of things so um and part of that was creating my own content for the studios too uh and then I started streaming myself um actually it'll be three years ago in two weeks so it's almost my streaming anniversary and wow. uh I started doing it on the the off chance that I enjoyed it doing it on my personal channel and it just kind of grew from there and I went full-time last april so it's been a whirlwind journey over the last few years honestly it's it's grown beyond wow. anything i could have ever imagined wow and where did you previously work i would love to hear about that um, if you don't mind I, me asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I worked at um oddworld inhabitants the the folks that did abe's odyssey um i worked with team 17 so i was on like overcooked and worms and ukulele and stuff and uh, i've worked at ubisoft so i did a bunch of streaming for them and hosting panels and doing the more kind of corporate side of streaming. Um, and I've done a bunch of freelance work as well on random little projects here and there and consultation and things like that too. So oh. it was kind of a whole variety of different experience being in front of a camera that made me think maybe I could do this myself without it being a work thing. So, yeah. Wow. And now you're full time. That's mm -hmm. incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. And you said you went full time in April of last year when all the craziness happened. Yeah. How <laughs> was that experience, you know, starting off full time with the pandemic? Um, it kind of aligned weirdly perfectly because I moved from Canada to the United States last March. And the plan mm -hmm. was always when I arrived in the States, I was going to be doing something for myself because on my mm -hmm. visa I'm not able to work like a normal normal job in inverted commas you know yeah. nine to five I can't I can't get a job anywhere so I've been doing streaming instead and it was kind of like a, I'm enjoying it doing it part-time maybe I yeah. should try doing it full-time for a bit even if it doesn't work out it'll help me keep myself entertained for a bit you know and it just kind of all aligned really well that everybody was sort of looking for somewhere to spend time online, um, obviously yeah. with, with the pandemic and everything. So it meant that I got quite a good uh, foundation set up for being full time because my community that would usually support me in the evenings all started working from home. So they were able to have me on in the daytime and stuff and just help get things out of the gate. and. Um, a large focus of my content has been taking care of my community and making sure that they all feel welcome and they feel safe and they feel valued and uh, having the ability to connect with people in that way throughout the pandemic has been amazing, honestly. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You, you set yourself right up. Yeah. The community was right there with you and they're working from home, too. So they get to watch you all day. That's mm -hmm. really awesome how that worked out for you. I'm that's yeah, I'm super, super happy for you. And I know that you're just going to grow more and more in the future. And I can't wait to see what you do with your community. Yeah. And speaking of your community, your community has supported so many amazing causes on your channel through Tiltify. And I wanted to know a little bit about why you fundraise on your channel. Whew. Um, so that's a very big question. <laughs> <laughs> So I originally started fundraising because it was something that I was sort of handed the opportunity to do at work. Um, the studio that I used to work in uh, with Ubisoft, we did a team fundraiser every year for Extra Life. And I thought I'd give it a go um, because my community in the past had funded me when I needed things. I was like, like, who's to say that they can't 
put a few hundred dollars towards something else instead. Yeah. And I kind of got into fundraising through that and sort of felt how fun it could be and how enjoyable the experience was and kind of the, you know, the excitement of doing events, especially as a team. Um, and once I'd done that, I was kind of casually looking for ways to do it in the future. And I came across a group of folks uh, who stream for the WWF and decided to kind of get stuck in with them. And <laughs> it was a it was a horrible experience initially because I was <laughs> underprepared. I was not ready yeah. for uh, running my own fundraiser. Um, and it kind of made me take a, a, not a horrible experience by the charity standards, by all means. They were fantastic. I was just not yeah. ready and didn't know what I was getting I myself understand. into. Um, yeah. just wanted to clarify that. And then, uh, <laughs> after that, I kind of took a few months off of fundraising and I was like, what can I do to make this a more meaningful event, make it uh, a bigger deal, make more people drop by. And I settled on fundraising for causes that mean a lot to me. Um, yeah. I have suffered with depression and anxiety for the last I don't know, 12 years or so. So it's been something that's been a huge part of my life since my teens. And um, I have been right down there with the, the people that have had those those worst of times, you know, and I settled on wanting to fundraise for causes that would help people avoid those situations. And that kind of sparked something both in me and my community. And since then, we've gone on to fundraise for um, various different LGBTQIA plus charities. Um, we've done fundraising for natural causes. So things like uh, if there's natural disasters um, or wildlife charities and things. Um, we've done fundraising for children's hospitals. We've done fundraising to, for so many different mental health causes too. And it, it became about not just helping my people like myself, but helping people like my community members too. So more often than not now, they will come to me and they'll say, Ellie, this means a lot to me. Um, this charity has just decided that they're going to help combat. Like, for example, um, there's the Mermaid charity in the UK that is currently opposing the anti-trans legislations. So that's yeah. currently the one that everybody in my community is like, yep, yeah, let's get behind this. Let's try and do something to help this. And that's kind of how it snowballed in a way. So, <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's that's really relatable for me, I would say, just finding causes that, you know, mean a lot to you and that you have a story for, I think that's really impactful to your community. So I love to hear that. And, you know, that when you're being vulnerable, and you're saying you suffered, you know, depression, and, you know, anxiety for so long, you're like, I know there's people out there that need help. And fundraising with your community is giving them those free resources. And you, you got to feel good about that, that you're doing exactly. so much good with your community. And that's amazing, because these people need all the help they can get. And these yeah. people, they just, they, they are sometimes scared to ask for help. But then when you fundraise for these causes, they make sure they create that awareness, as well with those uh, funds raised and everything and you know break that mental health stigma it's so so important in this yeah. industry as well so I'm happy to hear that you're fundraising <laughs> for all these amazing causes that mean a lot to you and yeah. of course different ones with you know kids and everything that's great I love that I'm just so happy to talk to you because yeah. you're amazing <laughs> and you have a great story and I'm I'm loving all of this and I wanted to ask you, like, what was your favorite fundraiser you have done so far? Probably a oh, big gosh. question to you. That's really hard to choose, but I, I feel like I always, when people ask me this, I always, like, default back to my first major one for the Trevor Project, um, which is really special to me in so many different ways because I've had so much fun fundraising over the last uh, 18 months or so. I've been doing, mm -hmm. I've done 10 this year, and I think I did five last year. So like I've I've done a bunch in the last 18 months and they're all so enjoyable. And we try and change it up with everything that we do and we try and have fun incentives and things. But my first major fundraiser for the Trevor Project, my community absolutely blew me away with how much they donated. Um, it was for Pride last year and that was when I shaved my head. And I think because it's tied to that moment 
it feels really special to me because that in itself was like, it was a reset for me. It was a uh, such a huge thing to do live on camera and mm -hmm. it raised so much money compared to anything I'd done before. And the fundraiser itself was so much fun. Uh, I streamed for, I think it was 10 hours and we played a whole variety of different games. Um, oh, no. And yeah, it was just super enjoyable from all angles. And it kind of gave me that, that drive to continue fundraising and to be like, yeah, this is what I want to do. So mm. not necessarily wow. my, my favorite favorite, but definitely the most special one for me. Yeah. And what do you think made it so special other than the funds you raised? It was a combination of seeing my community rally around truly for the first time mm -hmm. and seeing them all having so much fun, um, teaching them about the things that charities can do. Because I know a lot of people have this kind of uh, idea that charities just take people's money and don't give back and things and they think that they need to do huge amounts of fundraising to make any difference but a huge part of that fundraiser was me telling people that five dollars of donations will get someone a 30 minute phone call that could save their life and that was a huge driving force behind the funds that were coming in for that and just just getting to see them being excited and learning more and talking to other people about, oh, I've seen this streamer doing a charity fundraiser and like, it's it's so much fun. You should try something like that. And having that kind of impact, not just on the folks that the charity will benefit, but on the wider kind of streaming community around me as well was incredible. And yeah, that combined with the catharsis of shaving off all my hair. <laughs> <laughs> was that your first time shaving off your hair, by the mm -hmm. way? yeah wow and you look great with it thank like you I, <laughs> if you want to wear wigs you could do that too but you look fantastic like it's it just fits you so well thank so you. i just want to say that i i love it that was the first thing that draw me to you i'm like oh my gosh you look so good with this hairstyle <laughs> i'm loving it <laughs> yeah i'd had short ish yes. hair before but i went i was at the longest my hair has ever been and uh, -huh. uh kind of tying into the charity a little bit, which helped me sort of give more leverage almost as to why I was doing the fundraiser. Um, I was losing a lot of my hair through stress and through um, the medications that I was on and just raising awareness of things like that. Like I could show people patches in my hair and I was like, I'm just gonna shave it all off. And everyone yep. kind of was was shocked. My parents in particular were incredibly, <laughs> incredibly surprised that I was doing it. Um, but I've had big hair changes before taken off quite a lot of length, but never gone this short. So <laughs> yeah, it, it just if I ever go that short or wear a wig that, <laughs> you know, that, you know, that hairstyle type, I feel like there's just a big weight off of me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if you feel that way. I feel free if yeah. I have short hair. It was you know? incredibly freeing. So, yeah. So I bet that even probably helped your anxiety and mental health. I know sure. it did for me. So that's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Don't <laughs> don't grow your hair out. Just keep it right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, that's awesome. And I, I'm just happy that the Trevor Project does so much good for youth, um, you know, LGBTQ youth. And Same. it's so inspiring. And I love that amazing, you know, the gifts that give, you know, that $5 that can save a life within mm -hmm. 13 minutes. That is huge. And it's so important to learn about your causes and, you know, stressing that incentive to your community. That really does rally them up. They're like, wait, I have $5. Yeah. I want to get a Starbucks coffee today. I'm going to save somebody's life today instead. Exactly. So that is absolutely incredible. And thank you so much for sharing your journey with fundraising and everything. And I wanted to ask you, how is your experience using Tiltify? And I know you used Extra Life before. Yeah. Now Extra Life is with us now. So. It, which is perfect. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so honestly, I, I, know, I know that we're on the Tiltify thing right now, but I, I love it. Seriously, I think it's so easy to use and easy to find causes. And uh, the fact that I can, with a few clicks, set up a team fundraiser um, and just have it all ready to go 
in minutes is incredible um other platforms can make things quite difficult to do and like once you get used to tiltify's systems it can just yep. there are so many different possibilities um and i love all the changes that have been made in the last like year or so adding like the overlays mm -hmm. and the the cause uh incentives and things like that and it's just been so useful for me as a streamer and for my team and for all the events I've done in the past, it, it's an incredible tool for anyone that is wanting to consider fundraising, seriously. Um, and I'm really excited to see where the platform goes as well, honestly, because I can see there's little changes that keep being made and yep. I'm like, oh, I like that one. So, yeah. <laughs> Every week there's something new and mm -hmm. we're always improving. And we really appreciate that feedback. We always give that feedback to our devs, but of course, again, we're always improving. Do you think there's anything you would want added to the Tiltify platform? So the one big thing that I'm always like, it, the thing that takes the longest outside of Tiltify is mm -hmm. the alerts, the custom alerts that I have to set up for every single different yeah. incentive. So having something like that with the overlay system would be incredible and would save so many streamers time. And uh, I know within my community in particular, we like to do uh, crowd control style game incentives. Yes. Uh, because mm -hmm. I love crowd control. I will shill for them until the day I die. <laughs> but like- They're great. Oh, it's oh. fantastic. It makes it so easy to do anything yes. fundraising. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> um, but I like to do crowd control style stuff where it will be like mm -hmm. wear a blindfold or throw your weapon or, you know, things that will yeah. impact the gameplay or how I am playing the game. Um, mm -hmm and to have to click out and back into things can be a little bit uh time consuming when you're when you're live and you're in the moment you know so having those like custom custom alerts would be like that is all i need <laughs> i i agree with my creator hat on i agree too we'll yeah. tell the devs okay because <laughs> yeah i always go through you know our third party our stream elements or stream labs and set up all yeah. those different variants for different amounts or scare alerts and all that i yeah. think it would be nice if it's just all in one all through tiltify yeah. i agree because the overlays are incredible they are yeah. incredible they I absolutely are and i love all the sounds that it makes and they are yep. so clean and i love how customizable it is like <laughs> it's great it's just does is that's the I one agree. bit that isn't yep. pulled over so i got you i think that is something that is missing mm -hmm. and we need that so <laughs> hopefully in the works <laughs> and i just had a last question for you if there was somebody that wanted to start their first charity stream what advice would you give them um oh take your time getting set up I think uh, there's a whole bunch of advice that comes under that. Um, mm -hmm. But the main thing is to take your time, research your cause, make sure your alerts are ready, make full use of the overlays, get your incentives all set up. Don't just rush mm -hmm. into it because you won't have the, uh, the preparation and foresight necessarily to anticipate what could improve things. So mm -hmm. take your time to look at other fundraisers, look at what people are doing to help uh, boost their causes and help talk about them and just make sure that you are ready to go. You might not be ready in terms of nerves, but if you know that you've prepared enough, then you'll be fine. And just enjoy yourselves as well. That's a huge part of it. Make sure to enjoy yourself. I agree with all of that. It is so <laughs> important to enjoy yourself and prepare yourself. Okay, I've there was a moment that I started a charity stream within a day and I told my community within that day. I'm like, "Hey, we're fundraising today." <laughs> you you will you will fundraise and you will have a good time, but it's always better prepared so your community can save up their money or you yeah. know, they get ready and they can retweet and they're prepared and all that fun stuff. So, prepare yourself, give your community some time, make a graphic, okay? Make it cute and fun and exciting and rally up your community like Ellie does. So definitely amazing advice, Ellie. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for chatting with me today. It was a pleasure. Yes, I thank would you love so our much. Com <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I would love for our community to know where to find you on socials if you can let us know. I am Ellie Joy Panic 
everywhere twitter instagram twitch wherever you'd like to find me um ellie joy panic so yeah perfect <laughs> branding branding mm -hmm. and of course we will have all her social links down below so you can easily click them and follow her and keep up with her amazing content again thank you so much ellie for joining me and we hope you all have a beautiful day bye